This is the chassis of a Stoka Cruzi, and today we're going to disassemble portions of this chassis in order to show you what to do when you're having trouble with the telescopic mechanism here. That means generally with the Stoka Cruzi that the handle does not stay upright, but has a tendency to slide down and not lock into place. So this process is going to involve a certain amount of drilling and a certain amount of unscrewing. I'm going to start with one of the drilling operations, and that's going to be to drill out the two rivets right here on the inside bottom of the front frame. Uh, and you want to be a little bit careful because if you drill a bit too hard, you'll wind up drilling all the way through the frame, and that'll make a hole on the other side. Uh, I'm using a five millimeter drill bit. You could go with four and a half as well, and you want to kind of pop off the top ring first, and then work out uh, the, lower, the lower bit of the rivet. So I drill out one, I'm gonna drill out the other one. You wanna get your drill bit going in straight on when you're drilling out rivets. Okay, I'm gonna take a moment to clean up these metal shavings and then we'll pop off the front frame. Okay, now you can pull off the front frame. Uh, note that my chassis does not have a uh, shopping basket attached, so if yours, of course, will have the shopping basket and you will need to unscrew the shopping basket in the front. It's a pretty easy uh, process. I believe we have some other videos showing how to do that, at least on trails, which is the same. Uh, but in any case, remove the shopping basket, drill out those two rivets, and then you can pull off the front frame, just working it from both sides. go. Now there will be the heads of the rivets in here, so before you put it all back together, you do need to shake them out, one on each side. Okay, next step in getting towards that telescopic mechanism is going to be to remove these outer sheaths that actually house the inner telescopic bar. And in order to get these out, you're actually going to have to unscrew the main arm here that holds the seat in place. So you'll need a small hexagonal screw head and you're going to need it on uh, like a longer shaft in order to get it inside this hole and access the screw. And if you're having trouble screwing out the screw, like it just rotates in there, I am going to make a video later showing you how to, uh, to get it out. And uh, what may happen then is that on the back side, From here, these two pieces will pop out. And this is the nut that's holding it in place. It just goes in like this with the, uh, the rubber ring side down for when you're putting it back together. So we're gonna pull this out on both sides then. Do the other side real quick. And then I'm just going to pull the chassis sort of away from each other. It takes a little bit of force here, unless you want to uh, remove the back end too, which is kind of unnecessary. And I'm going to pop off this arm piece. Now this is actually an arm piece for trails, but it's just as functional. There's a couple of differences. So on the original Cruzy, this part here is going to be flat. You're not going to have this little poking piece. And instead, you're going to have well, this piece, which goes against the flatness and is inside there. And you're gonna have to knock out this piece as well if you have the original Cruzy one. Uh, difference being with the Trails and the Cruzy is simply that uh, the Trails one can take a car seat as well. Uh, but in any case, remove that and remove those little plastic pieces from inside the wells. So now if you press in the button on top, it will release whatever's left of the uh, telescopic mechanism that holds it underneath and you can pull out these sleeves. go. So I'll look at these sleeves for a moment. If you look at it, it's like this. There's this little hole here. So when that sleeve is all the way inside the side, it pushes all the way up in. And that little plastic piece plugs it right there, right? Now we have access then to the lower portion of the actual telescopic arm. And here is where the actual problem usually is. So this piece here, which is inside this uh, end plug, is gonna be the most common cause of the problem. Like if you're having it not lock in place, it's gonna be this little plastic peg you see here. And when I push in on that button, it 
pulls that plastic peg up. Now this one's not that bad, but uh, on yours, most likely, either all of this plastic peg will be cut off or uh, at least a portion or worn down. And what that plastic peg does is lock into holes again on the underside of this sleeve. You have your two higher positions uh, for handle height and you have your lower locked position. What we're gonna need to do then, if you have uh, this problem, is to replace this portion of the lower plug. In order to get at that, uh, we're going to have to disassemble this bottom end, and uh, in most cases, you have to disassemble the upper handle as well. So then in order to disassemble that lower end, we're gonna have to detach the wires from the top button. You're gonna need a uh, screwdriver again, the CRV T20 head, it's a star-shaped screwdriver head. You're going to want to start by removing the two screws that are in the well under the central handle at the top. And these two wells there. This then will allow us to pull the top panel up and off. And then we're actually going to have to get the bottom panel off too in order to get at uh, this button. And in order to do that, we have one more rivet that we're going to have to uh, drill out right there. It's enough for now just to pop the top off of it. go work it off now we can have a look at this button system so this button is held in place on both sides by a pair of tags you're going to want to just pop those in it's allow you to pull out this button just set it aside there are a couple of very small black metal pins here on either side you want to be careful not to lose those it's okay if they come out for now, but here are the wires that run down each side. So you wanna pull out uh, the one on the affected side or both if you're replacing both of these parts. Pull that wire loose. Then we're gonna come all the way back down to this bottom portion. And we can pop this piece out. Don't lose this as well. This guides that wire inside. Then on the very front, there's like this ring, right? And you wanna very careful uh, carefully pull this apart and pull it off because this piece can snap. There we go. Pull that off. Then, since that wire is attached, we can press in this peg and work out this entire plug as such. Pull the entire thing out. We can just feed that wire through again later. Okay. So now, in order to get at this smaller part, I'm going to start pushing the wire through. And there's going to be a couple pieces, another small black plastic pin, or black metal pin, a small spring, and then this, which is the head of the wire. You want to slide this entirely through. You have to push it in a little bit in order to get it all the way out. And now this piece pops straight out with a spring. So this, since this is the culprit, this is the piece that needs to be replaced. Uh, you're very unlikely to get this directly from the manufacturer. But this piece is very small, very simply made, and you could contact a 3D printer and have them print it out for you. I'm now gonna give you the measurement of how long the peg needs to actually be. Uh, in case yours is busted and you want to talk to a 3D printing place, that way you can give them uh, the correct length in millimeters for this little cylindri cylindrical bit. So then here is a completely new part, and you'll notice that on top there is a slight, um, it's like been slightly rounded over. Uh, I would say that, that the difference there between the apex of that and the lower portion of this rounding of the cylinder is very, very slight, and I wouldn't bring that up in the uh, 3D print service that you plan to use. Just have it be made flat, and you can round that off a little bit yourself if you have trouble. Uh, if you notice, then, the bottom portion of this here at the top has a bit of an arch. 
So I'm gonna give you the measurements from the apex of this arch to the top of the cylinder, as well as on the side from this line where the arch starts, this straight line to the top of the cylinder. So here at the top of that apex, it comes in at five millimeters. And on the side from that line, like the side of the arch essentially, it comes in at six. So that means that that arch from the apex to the point where it starts is just uh, one millimeter. Yeah? So what you wanna do then is take your damaged piece to a 3D printing service and uh, tell them the lengths that this is supposed to be and they can work that into whatever model they are creating for you. It's really not a very hard piece to 3D print. But in any case, once you have your new piece, I'm gonna show you how then to reassemble your chassis. Okay, we're gonna reassemble the plug then with your new piece. I'm gonna take that piece. There's a well at the bottom. Spring goes in that well. And then it slides in the side here. Now, pressing it in makes it open up inside. What's opening up is this uh, uh, rectangular um, notch here. You press it in and then you're gonna fit your wire back through that rectangular notch or hole and out the other side and that's gonna lock this piece in there so now you don't have to hold that piece in place any longer. And we're gonna pull this wire all the way down. Okay, look at the top here, the way this is set up and then you see that this piece is different on both sides. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your spring Pop it on this hook. You're gonna pull it in. And it goes in in this fashion. So that that hook, this hook here, is facing the same direction as this. It's gonna pull in. And then you're gonna take your little uh, black metal pin there. And you're gonna pull this whole thing down, press this in, you'll get it in the right place. Hold on. There. And you pull it. Be a little bit fiddly at first. And then it'll lock in place. When you pull it past a certain point, it'll pop in place. Alrighty. So that is the reassembly then of the plug. Now we can put it on the chassis. Okay, now we're gonna take that wire, thread it back in, get to the end. This uh, peg points downwards. There you go. You want it to line up with that hole underneath. Then you're gonna finally take that uh, little locking bit. Again, it uh, is open on one side. And if you look at the end of this plug, there's actually at the bottom end, there's like a little wall. So you know it's going to pop on there. Again, be careful with it. It does break relatively easily. Okay, now back at the top, you now have your two portions of the wire pop poking out. Okay, I'm actually gonna have to flip this piece over and do this from the back side. So I'm gonna show you first what you're essentially doing is taking each of these two wires one at a time with that little um, head. The head has to slide in through this larger oval bit. And then as the wire is pulled taut this way, it will then lock in place inside this groove. And you wanna make sure that you uh, at least don't lose these black pins. They do need to be there uh, in order to help guide the wire under. Yeah. So then after fiddling with all of these small parts for a while, you'll eventually get to this stage where these wires are back in place and you have those little pegs in place as well. Now those pegs are going to of course go on the inside of this uh, trough. And you're going to take that lower portion of your handle assembly again and you're going to pop it up to hold this in place. As you noticed, these little raised areas for the screws just pop right through. And now 
go ahead and just take this button, pop it in place. We'll just lock with those two lips. Okay, then we're gonna re-rivet from the back side. Pop in your new rivet. I believe they are five millimeter. I'm not exactly sure on how long. It's gotta get all the way through without impeding the mechanism in any case. Uh, I can look up those numbers if anybody needs them. Just leave us a comment. You can take your lower portion then, of, or the upper portion of the handle assembly, and we're just gonna pop it on like this. Flip the whole thing over, and then we can screw in those screws again. There we go. Okay. Next, we're going to reapply those sleeves on the bottom end. Okay, before you put your sleeve on, it's important to remember that other little plastic piece that fits in this rectangular hole here that uh, has like a wedge in the middle, and that is for guiding that, um, that wire, but it also actually adds to the circumference of this inner bar, so it's quite important. You just want to slide it all the way through. There we go, and it should be positioned so that uh, about an equal portion of it is sticking out on both sides. And now we're gonna take that sleeve. So you gotta find the right one. For this side, it would be this one. And the reason I know that is because this uh, portion where the arm attaches is on this inner side of this point, yeah? And then this hole should face downwards. That's for the rivet at the bottom of the front frame. So you wanna slide this on. Depress your handle on top to pull up that peg, and then you're gonna slide this in. And this is the point, if you're using then a 3D manufactured part, at which you wanna make sure that that little peg can lock out of those smaller holes on the bottom. As in whether you need to do any sanding, yeah? Because when you push in the button, these two should slide away from each other, and when the button is released, it then should lock into place. So replace that part, replace it on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna replace the seat arm. You need to make sure that the sleeve has slid all the way up so that that hole is cut into the metal of the sleeve then corresponds with the hole on the plastic here. You can just look right in there and see that they've lined up. And then again, assuming you're using a cruisy arm, you would want to put this piece in first and then put the arm in. But since I have the trails arm, it's all one part of the trails arm. I'm just going to slide this in. Just line everything up correctly. because It has these grooves and it has teeth there to make sure you get everything in the right position. I'm just going to press it, pull the chassis apart press it all in. And we're going to flip the chassis over onto its backside. And one by one, we're going to take these two pieces. You have your lock nut, the locking part, which is the part that has the, uh, like the rubber ring that is going to go inwards here like that. So it slides in place. And then we're going to put it so that the little lip of this plastic piece, if you can see, needs to point out slots right in like that. You're gonna need your hexagonal head again and your screws, and you're just gonna screw it from the inside well of that arm as we did with this assembly. Go. side. All right, now your arm is back in place. 
and we can replace the front frame. Okay, I'm just gonna show you how this works in case you have trouble while you're putting this on. You don't wanna force anything so that it breaks anything, but there's a separate metal sleeve here. This is of course going to go on the outside of the whole thing and lock in over that plastic lip there. Whereas this piece is actually going to fit in here. So if you have trouble, you can just pull those pieces apart from each other so that you can find the right position. When everything is correctly uh, pushed down and pushed in place, then from the underside, you should be able to see the rivet holes have lined up. If you're finding that you're having trouble with that internal metal sleeve pushing too far here so that your rivet holes don't line up, it means you forgot this piece when you were putting the arm back on. All right, that's what the problem is then. Okay, we're gonna flip the whole chassis upside down, re-rivet the front end. Okay, so I've actually measured these uh, rivets now with a ruler. These are the same rivets I was using for the top portion of the handle, and they are one centimeter long if you just take the tube, and of course not the little lock portion of the top, one centimeter long, uh, four millimeters in diameter. Take these, then, and just start riveting. There we go. And the front frame is now riveted on. You would, of course, reattach your shopping basket. So that's how you fix the faulty telescopic mechanism on the handle of a Stoka Cruzi process is very similar for the trails, but we will be doing a separate video eventually. We hope this video was useful to you, and if it was, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us continue making videos in the future. Thank you.